school board, the regular school board meeting, Monday, April 15th, 2024, and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please do roll call, roll call, Mr. Secretary. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Mrs. Zizzing. Here. Dr. Klein. Present. Mr. Pachasek. Here. Dr. Kostjo. Here. Mr. Leonard is absent. Mr. Matarazzo. Here. Mr. Nemec. Here. Mr. Petrucci. Here. Mr. Stovart. Here. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Well, uh, information, Dr. Harris? Yes, I just have um, one, and that's actually Josh Bujakowski and in the indoor percussion. Do you want to come up front and talk about your program coming up? So tomorrow evening at 8 p.m., uh, we will be hosting a send-off performance. Uh, the students of the Penn Trapper High School Percussion Ensemble will be playing their 2023-24 production uh, one last time here in uh, Harrison City, PA, before we board buses on Wednesday, head out to Dayton, and uh, go compete in WGI World Championships. Yeah, so we'd love if you guys could uh, attend our little performance. Uh, nothing too special or big, except for really nothing too big. Questions, yeah, John, uh, how many kids are in the percussion? We have 19. Mm -hmm. And how yeah, many yeah. parents have been helping? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We, we have uh, students from eighth grade to senior. So it's a kind of a wide variety. Sometimes there's more parents than kids there. I notice you have all the <laughs> yeah. parents yeah. helping. Yeah. yeah, not a bad thing at all. Well, right. stuff, so we always appreciate the <laughs> There is a lot of props. What's the location where you're doing it at? We're in the auditorium. Oh, okay. just all I thought. Yeah, so and which game time again? classes are there? Um, in, our, in our class, there's Concert A, Concert Open, and Concert World, and more Concerts Open. Concert Open. Yeah. And to be eligible, what did you have to do to prove that you belong here? We have to compete in local circuits, which is Trila, uh, a local circuit here, and we actually won the Trila Championship at Kiski last weekend. Um, yeah, we also won the WGI Regional at Indianapolis, and we also competed at WGI Mideast, which is I won't take up any more time. Hopefully you can see you all there. Appreciate you appreciate coming you. in. You let us throw in the meeting here and we'll let you go back to business. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, and that's actually all I have for information. I'll turn it over to Mr. Stovar for recognition of visitors. Okay, um, just need to go over the procedure for audience recognition. You must state your name, address, and group affiliation, if any. Your statement will be limited to three minutes in duration. All statements shall be directed to the president, and no participant may address or question a board member individually. Uh, you may be interrupted if your statement is too lengthy, personally direct, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. I have a list of residents who wish to address the board. Your name will be called in the order in which you signed up. So first up is Diana Allen. And Lou, can you turn on the microphone too? I did. It's ready to get there. Oh, the, the podium? Yes. Oh, I just got a text from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can check. Yeah, make sure. I couldn't hear. 
Yeah, he just texted me. Steve, is he watches. Okay. It might have been standing. Do you hear it okay here? La 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 la. Let me know. So it is working? Or it's yeah. not? Okay. He's if from. I, I, feel, I feel like we're in a small enough space that I will try to. The podium for it, it's being t taped live. Oh. Uh, it's been sent out. So he actually texted me from above saying that they were not close to the microphone. He didn't know if it was on. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I said that in front of the <laughs> yes. okay. Yeah. okay, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, board members and administration. I am here this evening to address the proposed relocation of Principal Joe Morasti from McCullough Elementary. Both of my children have had the privilege of attending McCullough Elementary. Prior to first grade, they went to a small Christian school with only six children to a class. As a parent, you can only imagine how overwhelmed I was at the thought of my little girl going to this big school. She couldn't wait for open house, and my husband and I were eager to meet the educators and administration who would be, we would be entrusting our firstborn with on a daily basis. On that warm August evening, we anxiously walked up to the steps of McCullough, and we were greeted by Principal Morasti. He was quick to give our daughter a high five and introduce himself, which immediately put a smile on her face and eased the mind of two nervous parents. He then introduced himself to us and politely pointed us in the direction of her classroom. Now, eight years later, with our youngest currently in first grade, I see that same enthusiasm every time I'm at the school. I have the privilege of being on the PTO where I volunteer at the school and I've seen firsthand the difference that Principal Morasti makes in the lives of these children. He knows their names, he asks about their activities, and is always willing to lend a hand. Whether it's wiping down the lunch tables or cracking a joke to put a smile on someone's face. During the pandemic, I became very familiar to you, the board members, and also to Joe Morasti. I didn't make it easy for him, but without hesitation, he answered every question and concern that I had. Even when we agreed to disagree at times, the mutual respect never wavered, and that is the sign of a true leader. In closing, I'm gonna share one last story. When my daughter was eight years old, she begged for us to let her join the wrestling team. We reluctantly agreed, and it wasn't long until she landed in the Pennsylvania State Finals. Not only once, but for the past four years consecutively, she has represented Pennsylvania in the State Finals. During that time, Joe's unwavering support and words of encouragement so meant so very much to her and our family. I am pleased to announce we just received word that she was chosen to represent Pennsylvania at the 14 and under national team tournament in June in the state of Indiana. Without the support and instrumental leaders like Mr. Morasti, that may not have been possible. I believe it would be a travesty to take him out of McCullough Elementary during the most pivotal years of development. One more second. The future of our community <coughs> begins at the core foundation, and there's no one better than help to, ve to develop those young students than Mr. Joe Morasti. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next signed up is uh, Zach Kessler.
and Makala Elementary's principal of nearly 18 years, Mr. Joe Morassi. My wife and I have had a child at Makala from 2010 to 2023. So for 13 of his 18 years, he has been our child's principal. Each and every time my wife or I contacted him as a McCullough parent, he was 100% attentive and responded with answers and guidance. He encouraged and supported each one of our three kids according to their personal strengths and needs. For my kids, these areas include academic enrichment, issues with anxiety, accommodations for unique health needs, encouragement in the direction of their extracurricular activities. His support has helped to shape their character. He's always been one of their biggest fans and encouragers, yet he also knew when they needed him to show the tough love that all kids need. In addition, my wife is currently a teacher at McCullough. Mr. Morasti has immensely supported her in every area that a principal should support a teacher. Plus, my wife does have a chronic health condition, so it means so much to me that he checks on my wife just about every single day to find her in her classroom during lunch, working through her lunch, tells her to stop, eat, and take a break. This is an example of how Mr. Morasti, time and time again, pays attention to people in detail. I would ask that you please spoken with all of the teachers at McCullough to ask them about their principal. I know that you would hear many positive comments. Just as he made it a point to know each of my children individually, I have witnessed this with so many other McCullough students and have been told this by so many other families. Joe is a good man. He has the integrity and courage that it takes to be a fantastic leader. Please realize that so many children do not have a supportive or constant adult in their lives to support them. Relationships with steady, caring adults creates a sense of belonging and stand as protective factors and make a huge difference in a child's development and mental well-being. Since all children need steady support and since relationships foster such growth and success, it would be so proactive if our school district did everything it takes to keep principals and teachers in the same building from year to year for these kids. To move principals and teachers around is arbitrary, random, and not so much based on reason or system. To foster success, our kids need consistent and caring adults at school through their principals, teachers, and staff. So I ask you to please put the kids' needs first. Set them up for the best environment for success. Take care of their basic needs to feel known, loved, and valued, and important through consistent, caring relationships and keeping the adults at school, such as their principals, steady. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Next up is Rachel Sementoff. I said that right? No? <laughs> <laughs> we'll say it right then. It's okay. Um, I'm Rachel Sementa, to ah. Freedom Lane Trafford. I am a level green parent of a kindergartner and third grader, and I'm here today to express my concern regarding the proposed elimination of one of our first grade classrooms for the next school year. Upon, speaking, upon signing up to speak today, I received a few phone calls from individuals wishing to express more details regarding this plan, just to ensure that I understood what was going on there. Um, and some of the other information was also that there's a plan to add a third and fourth grade classroom to bring those current class sizes from 25, 26 students down to approximately 17 per class. And there's also talk about adding an additional PM kindergarten class to adjust kindergarten class sizes down to about 15. Um, regardless, it perplexes me that we are willing to add teachers to bring class sizes down under 18 students per room, but the same plan pushes our first graders into classes of 20 or more. It is my understanding after talking to other families that there will be some students repeating first grade as well, and if that's the case, we're looking at class sizes of approximately 23 students in first grade next year. Keeping three first grade classes would have them in classes of approximately 15, which is on par, with what the average has been the last few years at Level Green. This allows room to grow should additional students enroll, whereas a class of 23 is only going to put us in the same predicament that we are trying to avoid. My daughter's third grade class this year is a prime example of this, as her class has grown tremendously to now 26 children, all in a school that I would like to mention shares a principal with Trafford Elementary. We have classrooms bulging at the scene, and we are looking at making major changes to classroom setups, but we don't even have a full-time principal. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Napoli is great, by the way, um, and I do applaud and appreciate his efforts at our school. But one word today that was used a lot was the word fair or fairness during one of my conversations in regard to an attempt to keep classes, class sizes down across the board in our district. I was also told that if enrollment continues to climb over the summer, we would keep our three first grade classes. 
However, I have not been presented with a number that would allow that to happen. I have been told that 14 is too low. We are looking at approximately 21 to 23 per class as being acceptable, but I'm concerned about the maximum. These incoming students are moving from half day instruction in a room with a dedicated aide, so essentially 10 to one is the ratio in my daughter's current first grade classroom, I'm sorry, kindergarten classroom, to a full day 20 to one ratio with no dedicated aide. If we are going to continue on with the term fairness, this is absolutely unfair and unsettling, especially for children who have spent the majority of their toddler years during the pandemic and are already cur currently struggling emotionally and socially just to catch up. In addition to research promoting smaller class sizes for a multitude of reasons, numerous other parents are also in support of the smaller class sizes at Level Green. Some are here tonight, some have wished to speak, but regardless, the current proposed plan is not taking all of our students into consideration. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Devin DeLumba. My name is Devin DeLumba. I live on Winchester Road in Trafford. I'd like to address the board this evening to discuss the elimination of the classroom sizes, as well as the increase that would be um, in the participate with the students in the classes. The Vanderbilt University study concluded that by increasing class sizes, it decreases on average the test scores as well as decreases the participation within those classes as well as increases distractions <clears throat> i'm not sure about you but i know speaking in a smaller <laughs> more comforting setting is a lot easier mm -hmm. to ask questions than in a larger setting especially whenever children will be going from kindergarten to first grade that's a large transition being able to be in a smaller more intimate setting allows them to ask questions without being fearful that they might ask the wrong thing um, and I also wanted you to consider that by eliminating the classrooms we might also be potentially eliminating um, or not guaranteeing I guess some of the tradition um, <laughs> sorry the wonderful teachers that we have in Penn Trafford so not only would this be a disadvantage to our children and their education, but it would also be, you know, a tragic, I guess, you know, thing for our community if those wonderful teachers lose their jobs as well or aren't guaranteed the jobs. So I just want to thank you all and please consider whether this would be in the best benefit for our children and their education and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Daniela Yarina. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Daniela Yarina. Um, I live on Sunset Drive in Trafford. I have two children at Level Green Elementary. One is currently in kindergarten, and the other is currently in second grade. Again, thank you for allowing me to be here this evening. Your time is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, I've worked in public education for 19 years now. Um, and I've seen the firsthand difference that class size makes for not only student success, but allowing teachers to effectively manage their workload in the classroom. Now I teach at the secondary level, so I'm used to balancing between 28 to 32 kids in the classroom, which is very difficult. Very difficult. I could not imagine how a first grade class of anywhere above 15, especially with my son, <laughs> um, where they can get individual attention, which is needed, especially with 504 plans that are growing, um, social and emotional needs, IEPs, etc. Uh, as a parent, taxpayer, educator, and member of this community, um, I, I love this community. I've, I've only lived here since 2020, and I, I really enjoy living here. Um, and today, I'm just asking for the school board, the people that we voted for to, to serve um, for the rest of the district, is just keep those ideas in mind about class sizes um, and making them comfortable, not only for the kids, but for, for the educators as well, um, and doing the best that they can do. And 
putting their expertise um, towards our children's education and well-being. Statistics show students in smaller class sizes, especially at the elementary level, perform significantly better on math and reading tests. First graders, they're learning to read. Uh, my son is currently trying to read to me at night, and I feel if he's in a class of 20 or more next year in first grade, I feel like he's not gonna get the attention he needs, especially as he's in speech therapy. So he's pulled out for speech therapy, he comes back in, um, and if there's not even a teacher aide in that classroom, I don't, I don't see how easy it's going to be for him to catch up with the rest of the class. Um, if a first grade class is moved to another grade, that will put class sizes well over to 20 kids per class, um, adding on to the students that m might not be moving on to the current class, as well as first graders that have yet to enroll in, in, in Level Green. Um, what Ms. Cementa suggested later, um, when she spoke before, I encourage you to listen to her ideas as you had your phone calls with her and as she spoke today. Um, we're trying to bring suggestions because we know you have a tough job to do. Um, thank you again um, for having me here today and listening to our voices this evening. I do hope you consider them when you make decisions about class size, um, and about the agenda items tonight and in the future. Thanks so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, that's all All the people we had listed to speak tonight. So we will move on to uh, a little business, which there is none. Uh, prior to the meeting at 515, the board convened for uh, an executive session where we talked about personnel and negotiations. And uh, now we move on to approval of the consent agenda. Uh, does any uh, board member want to remove any items from the consent agenda? Anybody? Hearing none, uh, I move to approve. Uh, where are we at? Uh, page four. Uh, uh, no items to be removed. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted under one motion? Motion. Sorry. Motion by Mr. Kachasik. Second. Second by Mr. Dr. Costio to approve the consent agenda items as submitted under one motion. Uh, question being called for, this will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. And we're moving on to page 15, guys. Uh, personnel and curriculum, Mr. Kachasa. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, move to employ the following personnel. New employment is it contingent upon the receipt of all necessary documentation. That would include Act 34, Act 151, Act 114 from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania within 30 days. Curtis Sequeira, a long-term substitute teacher at uh, Trafford Middle and Penn Middle Schools. And Tyler Lavelle, a long-term substitute teacher at Trafford Elementary. Second. Question. Uh, question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. And that is all I have, Mr. President. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Kachasek. And that's all we have on the agenda tonight. So I move for adjournment. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Motion. Second. Mr. Kachasek, second by Mrs. Issing. Uh, the meeting will be adjourned at 730.